10. Alexandria Lind A woman was trying to push her disabled BMW off a freeway ramp in Nevada in 2021 when her car was rear-ended by a Lexus. She died from her injuries, and the Lexus driver, 28-year-old Alexandria Lind, was charged with DUI, causing death or serious bodily injury, along with one misdemeanor count of failing to decrease speed or use due care. Records show that Lind was convicted of the DUI charge and received a two to five year prison sentence. She was then paroled in May of 2023. Nine, Tierra Richardson. Thanksgiving will never be the same for the family of 50-year-old Tiffany Price, who lost her life on the holiday to a tragic car wreck in 2022. According to police, 23-year-old Tierra Richardson was driving drunk when she crossed over the center line into oncoming traffic and crashed her Nissan Altima into a pickup truck. The vehicle then collided with Price's Pontiac GTO. Price was ejected from her vehicle and was later found in some nearby landscaping. She was then transported to a nearby hospital where she was pronounced dead. The three occupants of the pickup truck walked away with minor wounds, and Richardson's passenger was airlifted to a hospital in critical condition with a broken femur and other injuries. Richardson allegedly showed signs of being under the influence, including confusion, bloodshot eyes, and slurred speech. And according to an arrest report, her attitude shifted from cooperative to combative and aggressive. She was booked on charges of driving under the influence resulting in death, reckless driving resulting in death, driving with a suspended license, and driving with a suspended registration. While the outcome of her case is unclear, records show that she's no longer in the Clark County Jail, and there are no inmates with her name in the state prison system. 8. Irina Borisova Shadrina Lionel Michael Marquez began to experience engine problems one night in November 2021 while driving his Maserati in Sunny Isles Beach, Florida. He pulled over on the side of a bridge to look under the hood and was hit by a Maserati, sending him flying over the railing and into the intra-coastal waterway below. The Maserati proceeded to crash into a barrier wall and kept driving until its front tire fell off. It was found a few hundred feet, about 61 meters, from where Marquez was struck. As authorities began a search for the victim that would last through the night and into the next day, police arrested the Maserati's driver, 33-year-old Irina Borisova Shadrina, on suspicion of driving intoxicated. Her blood alcohol content was allegedly three and a half times the legal limit at the time of the crash. Marquez's body was found the next morning, nearly 12 hours after the crash, and Shadrina's charges were upgraded to manslaughter and vehicular homicide. She was convicted of vehicular homicide and is currently serving a two-year prison sentence with a projected release date in March of 2025. 7. Sarah Ramsamy Beachgoers were enjoying their Memorial Day weekend at Smyrna Dunes Park in Volusia County, Florida, when an SUV came speeding down the beach at 50 miles per hour, or 81 kilometers per hour. The vehicle came dangerously close to hitting at least one person before plowing into the ocean and coming to a stop. Police helicopter and body cam footage showed a woman identified as 26-year-old Sarah Ramsamy standing on the beach with her SUV resting in several inches of water nearby. And when a deputy told her that she couldn't drive on that part of the beach, she said she was just trying to turn around. She denied bystanders' claims that she'd almost hit several people and their pets, but was arrested on suspicion of DUI. In the body cam video, a woman who'd been traveling as a passenger in Ram Sammy's car became upset when the deputy said he was taking the driver to jail. The friend pleaded with law enforcement not to arrest Ram Sammy as deputies handcuffed her and took her into custody. According to investigators, Ram Sammy had a blood alcohol content of 0.153, which is nearly twice the legal limit in Florida. She was charged with DUI and reckless driving, and was cited for failure to obey a traffic control device. 6. Kelsey Brianna Gold 
a Wisconsin woman was lucky to be alive after losing control of her car on a freeway overpass in Milwaukee and plunging 70 feet before landing on a ramp. Footage captured by a highway camera showed the car barreling through a guardrail and launching off a snowbank at 2.30 a.m. The video showed the sedan spinning in the air as it plummeted toward the ground. Thankfully, though, it landed upright, and the driver, 27-year-old Kelsey Brianna Gold, survived with just minor injuries. According to police, Gold called her boyfriend instead of dialing 911. She was still in the car when police arrived an hour and a half later, after a passerby noticed the banged-up vehicle and called the authorities. The car's hood and front end were heavily damaged, and the front windshield was completely smashed out. When an officer asked Gold where she was coming from at the time of the accident, she reportedly failed to give a direct answer, saying that she was bad with directions and was using the GPS on her phone. The young woman was then treated at the scene by paramedics and was taken into custody on suspicion of drunk driving. 5. Ashley Beams While waiting for her takeout order at a TGI Friday's restaurant in Toms River, New Jersey in February 2022, 31-year-old Ashley Beams allegedly drank a Long Island iced tea, followed by three vodka shots. Then, during the three-mile, about five-kilometer drive home, she drifted onto the shoulder of the road and struck 62-year-old James Cruz, fatally pinning him between two cars. Cruz was getting a package out of his trunk when he was hit. He was pronounced dead at the scene, and Beams was charged with a handful of serious crimes including driving while intoxicated, aggravated manslaughter, vehicular homicide, and multiple other traffic-related offenses. According to charging documents, a blood test revealed that Beams had a blood alcohol content of 0.321%, more than four times the legal limit. And based on her receipts from TGI Fridays, investigators estimated that she drank about eight ounces of liquor during her short time at the restaurant. A witness to the crash told police that Beams was all over the road in the moments leading up to the crash. An affidavit stated that people close to the young woman said that she'd struggled with alcohol abuse for years. She'd also previously pleaded guilty to a DUI charge in 2014. Beams pleaded guilty to vehicular homicide in her more recent case and was sentenced to five years in prison but she'll become eligible for parole after serving 85% of her sentence. 4. Cassidy Johnstone During the early morning hours one day in January 2020, a BMW was clocked at 83 miles per hour, 133 kilometers per hour, as it sped along a highway in Auckland, New Zealand. Police initially chased after the driver, who was rapidly changing lanes and weaving around other vehicles, but the pursuit was abandoned due to safety concerns. The woman behind the wheel of the BMW, later identified as 21-year-old Cassidy Johnstone, continued along the highway at a high rate of speed, even after police stopped chasing her. She then lost control of the car on an off-ramp and struck a light post before crashing through a bush and traveling 30 to 50 feet, 10 to 15 meters up an embankment. Johnstone's two passengers were left with long-term injuries that continue to disrupt their lives today, and one of them may never be able to work again. Police found the young woman in the front passenger seat and immediately noticed the smell of alcohol on her breath. According to law enforcement, Johnstone initially denied being the driver, but eventually admitted to being behind the wheel. She allegedly had MDMA in her system, and her blood alcohol content was twice the legal limit. Johnstone pleaded guilty to two counts of causing injury while under the influence of drink and a drug. She was then sentenced to six months of house arrest, lost her license for a few years, and was ordered to pay $22,500 to the victims. In June of 2023, she appealed her conviction, claiming that it was negatively impacting her career. But it only drew more attention to the case, and the court rejected the appeal, noting that Johnstone had received a generous sentence to begin with, since she could have ended up doing prison time. 3. Bianchia Gleason 
An Indianapolis woman's Christmas ended badly when her Chevy Malibu plunged through the ice of a frozen canal she'd been driving along after veering off a nearby road. According to police, 33-year-old Bianca Gleason had driven down an embankment and through a park before ending up on the frozen surface of the canal. She was seen driving along the ice until she reached a dead end. But just moments after turning around and heading toward a street, the car crashed through the ice and into the frigid water. Bystanders helped Gleason out of the water and into the warm lobby of a nearby hotel where she waited for the police to arrive. Local resident Mason Broklaw was taking out his garbage when he saw the headlights of Gleason's car as she drove along the canal. He later told Fox 59 that he couldn't believe the ice was supporting the vehicle's weight, and he estimated that the car was going at least 30 miles per hour, 48 kilometers per hour, before it became submerged. Viral footage of the incident showed some ice skaters moving out of the way as the vehicle approached and drove past. The bystanders seemed both shocked and amused by what one person described as a ballsy move. But Gleason didn't know she was on the ice until she fell through, according to what she told police. She blamed her GPS for leading her onto the frozen waterway. But investigators said that the device was instructing her to go around the canal rather than into it. Officers noted in their report that Gleason's eyes were bloodshot and that her breath smelled of booze. She was taken into custody on suspicion of driving drunk after failing field sobriety tests. And according to law enforcement, her blood alcohol content was nearly twice the legal limit. Gleason was originally charged with three misdemeanors, but ended up pleading guilty to one count of endangering a person while driving intoxicated. She received a suspended sentence of 358 days, along with 270 days of unsupervised probation. 2. Karen Watkins Visitors at Winner's Circle Park in Flowood, Mississippi, witnessed a shocking incident one Sunday morning in August 2019 when an SUV crashed into a pedestrian bridge. Thankfully, though, nobody was hurt. Police arrived to find the driver, 29-year-old Karen Elaine Watkins, wearing only a towel. Then, after being taken to a nearby hospital, she was booked into custody on suspicion of DUI and driving with an expired license. At the time, Watkins already had one DUI conviction under her belt, stemming from an incident that had happened 10 years earlier in Mississippi. She was accused of driving drunk in North Carolina in 2015, but she challenged the case, and the charge was withdrawn. Since then, she appears to have stayed out of trouble, suggesting that the incident at the park was a lesson learned. 1. Diane Schuler. After a weekend camping trip in Sullivan County, New York in 2009, Diane Schuler and her family headed back toward Long Island in several separate vehicles. Diane and her five passengers stopped at several places along the way, including a McDonald's restaurant and a convenience store, before something went terribly wrong. About an hour and a half into the drive, Diane called her brother, who was also driving home from the campground, and said that she was being delayed by heavy traffic. Witnesses who saw Diane's minivan around the same time would later claim that she was driving erratically along the highway as she wove between lanes, flashed her lights, and honked her horn at other vehicles. Others reported seeing Diane pulled over and vomiting on the roadside, where she left her cell phone behind. Two hours after Diane's phone call to her brother, 911 dispatchers began receiving reports about a minivan driving on the wrong side of the Taconic State Parkway at 80 miles per hour, 129 kilometers per hour. Then, less than three minutes after the first call came in, the minivan collided head-on with an SUV, rolled over, and burst into flames. Eight people involved in the crash died, including Diane, four of her passengers, and the SUV's occupants as well. The other victims were 81-year-old Michael Bastardi, his 49-year-old son, Guy, and their friend, 74-year-old Dan Longo. Two passengers of another vehicle that was struck during the crash sustained minor injuries. Emergency responders found a bottle of vodka sitting on the floor of Diane's mangled minivan, and a toxicology report showed that she had a blood alcohol level of 0.19 at the time of the crash. 
There was also alcohol in her stomach that hadn't yet been absorbed into her bloodstream. Based on the amount of THC in Diane's system, the medical examiner estimated that she may have smoked marijuana as little as 15 minutes before the crash. Diane's family adamantly denied that she was drunk and insisted that she rarely drank alcohol, period. They swore she would have never deliberately put others in danger and said that there must be some other explanation for what had happened. A convenience store worker and McDonald's worker who spoke with Diane before the crash said that she seemed perfectly sober. The family's campaign to re-examine the case and determine an alternative cause for the accident were captured in the HBO documentary, There's Something Wrong with Aunt Diane. Despite their efforts, though, the tragedy was officially ruled as a homicide. And the reasons behind Diane's out-of-character decision to put her family in grave danger remain a mystery to this day. If a really drunk friend got behind the wheel after you tried to stop them from driving, what would you do? Would you call the police, even though you know they would be mad at you for it? Or would you remain tight-lipped and hope that they reach their destination safely? Let us know what you think in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.